What's going on, guys? Dane here, and you already know what's going down. We got Guardian Chronicle back on the docket, and uh, I got a guide for you, an early game guide. This right here is the filthiest team in the game right now. You know how I know it? Do you hear me out real quick. First of all, we have gone through the whole tier system with a flying colors. Our win rate is sitting at, uh, can I see my win rate right here? Um, 82% out of 81 games won. Beautiful stuff. Um, I have to start playing co-op apparently. Um, we have an 81% win rate right now, which includes the beginning of the game without using this deck. This deck has destroyed competition. No one's running it right now. Also, Lucid Fate, the guild is here. So if you want in on a guild and you're playing this, or if you're not playing this and you want in on a dope guild, Klingster went ahead and set it up. He has been an OG with the channel forever. And between the two of us, let this pop up. Between the two of us, we are the only two in the guild. We are the seventh guild in the game at the moment. And by the way, I've been taking on people in every single one of these guilds solo. And Klingster has been taking on these people solo as well. If you want to get in on this game, I swear to God right now is the way to be. I know the downloads are low. That's why. Look at the team that made this or like like bought the IP. It's not staying low download. Get on in. I want to show you guys uh, this deck though. We're starting out with the promotion match over here. Now, this person right here had a high MMR when I showed up and saw them. John Net. Um, they are currently in the challenger rank of right alongside me at this moment. And this was my uh th this was the match that got me in to the next rank. The one that got me out of the, the Wood League and into the real league. You know what I'm saying? And I want to show you guys and talk about what this team is and why it works so well while footage is happening because you're not going to have to sit through menu surfing on here. I've got you covered. Now, this team consists of, if we take a look, uh, we can't actually click on their portrait. We can click on their portraits. We have Fox over here. I'm going to call her Foche. Foche, I don't know how to say it, man. I'm not from La Firenze. You know what I'm saying? What I do know is... Uh, this girl right here is a growth unit, but she does not give you Lanik. What she does is when you merge her together with herself, obviously, I guess, but not really because there is a unit in this game I'm aware of that merges into other people that I don't know if it's in the game yet. If it's not in the game yet, um, it's going to be, hopefully, I'd love to see it come back. But Fox over here, we're going to call her, merges into herself, and when she does, not only does she turn into a random merge... But she gives you a level one of another unit somewhere on the board. And as you start her up, she has a chance to give you a level two, which is amazing. And a level, uh, it, when you uh, three star her, she gives you two units, which have a chance of being a field level plus one as well. So she gives you more spawns, which saves you Lanik. Say you have 300 costs for a spawn at some point. Merging her together is 300 Lanik saved as a one cost comes out. When she's fully evolutioned, you get two units guaranteed, and they have a chance to be tier two, which costs two units to be played together, to be merged together normally. It's ridiculous how much Lanik she saves you. That is why I'm using the master that gives you Lanik upon merge. I also have his power right now starting me with 200 extra Lanik. That's why I use the power stones on for him. With her, I'm working towards giving her Lan uh, getting Lanik when merge. With Fox, my growth unit. Who else is on this team? Well, we have another support unit before we get into the nitty gritty of the damage dealers, right? Berna. This girl right here gives everyone around her an attack power up, which works for everyone, whether a skill unit or whether they are a, a DPS unit, whether they're a physical unit, doesn't matter. She gives attack power up, so they're going to be hitting harder no matter who they are if they're within two tiles of her. So this entire stage right here of everyone clustered on each other up front is being touched by a one single tier three or level three, however you want to say it, support. They're getting their power boosted. They're also getting their skill cooldowns lowered, which means my fire golem and my legendary man over here, I can't remember his name, we're going to get to him right now, have their skills lowered because of her and they're doing more damage and they're both damage dealers and the dot is going to multiply in damage as his power goes up not just do one extra hit like a rue might but rue is a beautiful beautiful uh single target nuker he just hits random units so let's talk about these units in general pitsona over here is my legendary damage dealer that we're rocking out with this man it hits the front unit. He hits him for a lot. He he swings pretty fast. He does good damage. He is a consistent 
uh, I guess you could call him ADC. He's an attack damage carry, but he has a skill that periodically will rain rocks from the sky and do big AoE damage. It is unimaginable how much damage this AoE does. It chunks bosses, and you're going to see occasionally rocks fall from the sky, just like that that took out that huge gap in the line right there. That's what he provides. He has a periodic skill, so the more of him that are out, the more damage he's doing with it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stat sheet right here. Rue, we still got to get to why Rue's on the team, don't we? But, yikes. Next match. Now we're in opposite positions where we are the defending champion and we're going against someone in Wood League, so don't even worry about it, man. Look at his squad, bro. He's only got the same legendary as I do, so, like, obviously the pay to win is up, man. He, he's, he's here with a better team than mine. He's got two legendaries, one of them being a support unit, one of them being a damage dealer that we're rocking. So, yeah, he's an attack damage character, this man right here, uh, Petona. We're going to have to learn their names for sure. Um, and his uh, skill is ridiculous. It gets lowered as well by Berna. She r lowers his cooldown and will continue to lower his cooldown. And he's going to continue to just do more damage and get more area for his skill. So you saw that gap in the line earlier. It's going to be bigger than that by two tiles eventually, which is insanity. If it was only one, that's around it, man. That's circumference. It's a big area once he's evolved twice. It is important to get him evolved twice early. He's a huge DPS source, but so is Burning Golem. This is my highest actual leveled up unit right now. Burning Golem is the AoE unit of dreams. His skill periodically makes him burn everyone. He puts a burn on the front unit that trails back along the whole line. So whoever's in front is going to get everyone behind them burned. As long as you have some uh, one Burning Golem up front somewhere and in the back somewhere, you're going to see a lot of fires popping off, getting him a uh, high field level in a very important spot, in a opportune spot, is going to sink people's games. He's going to be killing people so quick with his AoE, you're not going to see them coming out the door, and you're going to see your enemies have to deal with way more units than they deserve to. Don't worry about it. We don't have a growth unit for money, you're going to notice. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But his skill does go off more and more often as uh, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders over here, Berna, uh, is around him. So she's making him put more fires down that trail all the way back and do ridiculous dots. Look at that one shot. We got the the field level three and field level two just dropped of the, of what's his name, Petona, just dropped their skill on him with the 50% damage increase and one shot the boss with two ruse instantly. He didn't even have a chance to pop out. Beautiful stuff. Boss killing going on right here. But Rue is the final one to talk about. Rue attacks randomly, which is a double-edged sword. He does not just hit high-priority targets, which makes him worse than Chubby in that regard. He does more damage, attacks faster, has a higher attack range. And when I say more damage, I mean much more damage than Chubby. But he hits randomly, which is not great for waves. He will hit these... Elites occasionally, but he is not going to be the one that is elite killing for you. It is going to be a group effort, but Petona makes up for that. Petona's AoE hitting the front target makes up for that. So he's Rue is here to make sure bosses go down fast. That's what he's really here for. His boss damage is going to be nuclear while he's not getting a whole lot of damage off on the waves themselves. That's what you're looking at out of Rue. Now out of everybody else here, Rue ends up doing more damage than everybody else, no matter what I uh, do about it. We do have a lot of DPS coming out of the Fireman and the uh, Petona. But it's shared because they're both AoE units. You know what I'm saying? So those two are the bread and butter of the waves. Rue is the boss nuker. That's how this works. Now, you want to be able to keep a Burna somewhere around... Your uh, Petonas and your Fire Golems, your Burning Golems. That is the key to victory with this one. Let's talk a little bit more gameplay, though. Now, I'm using this one because it's the longest one. This person was the best actual player that I came across, Dragoas. This was a tough one, man. This was a lengthy battle of wits between me and him. And being a good player is better than being a whale. He does not have anything crazy level, just like I didn't at this particular point in time. So... Here's what I want to talk about as far as playing this one goes. I already dropped the mega gameplay guide that if you need to know the ins and outs, no matter what team you have, on how to actually play this game at the highest level, 
I can't do any better and no one can do any better than what I dropped already. Uh, I understand there might be an audio issue with it, so maybe at some point I'll redo it. Turn subtitles on or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, It is what it is. It's such a perfect gameplay guide. I can't stress it. But what we can do is talk about specifically positioning with these characters, right? And also, how does the Lannick work? Well, we have a master that gets Lannick with merges. We also have a growth unit that gives us more tier ones for more easy, simple merges over the course of a game. So we're getting a lot of Lannick from merges between Fox, between our master, and between all of our tier ones that we're pretty much getting rid of immediately because we're getting so many of them. Now, we also want to make sure that we're not over-merging our Burnas. We want Burnas to be in very clutch positions. We want Burnas to be around as many Fire Golems and as many Petonas as possible. And if she can be around Ruse, he is getting more damage, though he gets nothing else actually out of it. The more damage helps for boss killing, but we're more worried about Petona and Burning Golem being around these burners. You want her to be in a position where she can touch a lot of people as well. On this map, the end pike that I have on the bottom right there, the southern area, the end pike she's sitting on, that little horseshoe U-turn, you know, the hairpin turn, whatever you want to call it. She's sitting there because she can hit a wide area with her two range. I want another one where that level two Rue is a blinking ever so beautifully, where we've already had Burnas in the past. So we're going to be high priority merging in those spots because if we get high level DPS units, great. If we get a Burna, amazing where that two piece Rue is chilling. But we're also trying to merge as many of our ones out of the way before we even worry about it as possible especially while we're not really stressing about our damage. We are getting plenty of kills right now, but things are not leaving the first hallway. So we're not stressing getting Berna on the main stage yet, but we do want her there as soon as humanly possible. That's kind of the thinking there. Now, as far as the rest of this, we are merging every fox that can be merged at all. It doesn't matter. Every fox that can be merged is going to be getting merged. Now, I, w I do want to talk about powers as well. What kind of powers you're looking on? For these people well if you're doing a team like this lanik for merge on as many people as possible is amazing but there's better things you can do i would say attack speed on rue i would say just damage in general or money for merge on burning golem believe it or not because you don't need a thousand of him because the dot doesn't like the the dot doesn't come out consistently enough to be stacking like that and there's other units you want way more of aka petonia you want way more of him than burning golem so, Lannick for Merge, or uh, Attack Power Up on Burning Golem. You don't need crit. He's dots, you know what I mean? You don't need him to crit. Nothing crazy like that. Uh, the Fox, Lannick when Merge is the only thing that makes sense. Uh, you know, Rue obviously attack speed. Petonia, you want either skill cooldown, or you want crit rate, or crit damage. Either one, crit rate, crit damage, attack speed, or skill cooldown, but honestly, skill cooldown is way better than attack speed on him. Uh, we just destroyed Dragonius. This was the longest match that we had today to show off. He has no HP left, but look at the boss kill potential out of all the Ruse all of a sudden. This is why Ruse here, as he begins to absolutely tear through this mess. But again, look at his side, right? If it doesn't look like we're killing ours fast, look at his side. Look at how he's trying to handle this. He has no real positioning. He has so many up close of his uh, rare unit that it needs to be far away to do damage. So he has a whole like window of opportunity between all of his yellow units where nothing is even getting hit at all. He couldn't even hit the elite unit down. Like we're on that was a round three boss. And look at the damage on that one all of a sudden. Petonia, we barely got any of him out, but Burning Golem and Rue carried the day. We didn't even need Petonia on that one. There's a lot of flexibility having three damage dealers where you're less screwed over when things merge if they don't merge right. Having three damage dealers in this game is essential. Two of them being AoE is amazing. One of them being a hybrid is amazing. One of them being a single target nuker is needed. And then the rest of this is just more skills, more money for merge. That's it. Um, money for merge on uh, Burna as well is kind of what I would go there. I don't think you need anything else. Money for merge, money for merge, uh, starting with money on your master. A, a crit is amazing on this man. Skill cooldown is amazing on this man. Skill cooldown on this man or uh, power up preferably because he gets a lot of skills out when Burna's here. Rue, just give him more attack speed. You're going to be happy that you did. 
That's it for this one, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And peace out.